Then the priest Aaron's sons shall wash its entrails and its legs with water, and the priest shall burn all on the altar as a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. Leviticus 1, 8-9. The burnt offering, 5 for the glory of God alone. This action rendered the sacrifice typically what Christ was essentially pure, both inwardly and outwardly pure. There was the most perfect correspondence between Christ's inward motives and his outward conduct. The latter was the index of the former. All tended to the one point, namely the glory of God. The members of his body perfectly obeyed and carried out the counsels of his devoted heart, that heart which only beat for God and for his glory in the salvation of men. Well, therefore, might the priest burn all on the altar. It was all typically pure and all designed only as food for the altar of God. Of some sacrifices the priests partook, of some the offerer, but the burnt offering was all consumed on the altar. It was exclusively for God. The priest might arrange the wood and the fire and see the flame ascend, and a high and holy privilege it was so to do, but they did not eat of the sacrifice. God alone was the object of Christ in the burnt offering aspect of his death. We cannot be too simple in our apprehension of this. From the moment that the unblemished male was voluntarily presented at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation until it was reduced to ashes by the action of the fire, we discern in it Christ offering himself by the eternal spirit without spot to God. This makes the burnt offering unspeakably precious to the soul. It gives us the most exalted view of Christ's work. In that work, God had his own peculiar joy, a joy into which no created intelligence could enter. This must never be lost sight of. C.H. McIntosh